I'm amazed at a lot of things that were said in this book so far by this author. He wrote this book in 1992, so that was a while ago. But well, it's a history book, so, I mean, things are really static in history anyway. He actually, he said that the Indians supplied most of the Thanksgiving food. You know, in pictures and art, you'd, you see, like, it looks like the pilgrims are offering Indians all kinds of crazy foods. Like, the Indians just kind of wandered in, and the pilgrims were having Thanksgiving, and everybody just uh, joined in what the pilgrims put together, but the Indians supplied most of it. Uh, he, was, he was saying that uh, they're really good hunters in general. Uh, Indians were the ones that uh, settlers mainly relied on for hunting well early on especially during uh, the Thanksgiving pilgrim time Indians were the experts because uh, they've been practicing it for thousands of years before the white settlers came in um, and then on page 113 corn syrup is closest to glucose well <laughs> that's why people are getting diabetes because insulin is needed to digest this glucose, and if you're going to eat corn, corn, corn syrup, okay, corn syrup, uh, you need to have a little boost to help digest that, that, uh, the glucose, that's really a, a strong sugar, and they're just putting it in all kinds of food these days, so like, it's, and it's, I think it's a drug, Okay, he on 118, he went into some great interesting detail about how tobacco is sticky. People would walk out with all kinds of bugs on them and leaves and stuff because they stuck to them uh, after walking through the tobacco fields. Um, let's see, transplant foods. Yeah, they broke off the buds and the smaller suckers that grew on the stem so the leaves grew bigger. Uh, people do that with tomatoes and other kinds of, it's like strawberries, I did that when I picked strawberries as a kid. You pull off those flowers so that it focuses on the berries. Or you pull off the, the those viney, those viney extensions. Slaves were worth more than the land. Yeah, I just kind of wrote that that in there on page 125 because I've read that in many places for a lot of things. The land just never has the same, the land can never match the same value as, as what's on it. Like people have said cow, the cows are worth more than the lands, the crops are worth more than the, the lands. So it's like that's just an extension of uh, how the land is, is valued compared to what's actually put on it. The land just kind of houses uh, the, the valuables. Uh, you can work the land and make it uh, fertile and stuff, but what you grow on it is going to be what's, what's of value, whether it's animal or plant. Now this is interesting. Okay, on top of another interesting thing, the Queen exiled all blacks from Britain back in the uh, 1600s. It's on page 139 here. The late 1500s. She did it twice, too. Uh, 1596 and then in 1601. She, she banned all black people. They called them niggars and blackamoors. Back in pretty much 1600 right on the right on the button 1600 that's amazing what's even more amazing is there was a law in Massachusetts that allowed the slave owners to brand to actually use a hot iron and brand their symbol onto the uh, slave what they said they did was they etched some kind of symbol on the cheek or the forehead then they put gunpowder in that etching or something, and then they did something else. So it is a way to identify the blacks. Um, there's a preference for African slaves over the uh, <laughs> Mexicans or Indians because then the main reason was Africans tended to not die from malaria. They had the sickle cell disorder, well, which they do today. That prevents malaria. 
Um, yeah, it's an interesting book. 